Hi, I'm Herrick Kimball from Planet Wizbank, and today in this video I'm going to introduce you to a very simple idea for drip irrigating areas of your garden. I developed this idea hmm, four or five years ago. I've used it every year since then in my garden. I'm using it now. We're going through quite a dry spell. And um, this idea involves using nothing more than a plain bucket like this and a bucket irrigation hardware kit like is in this box that I'm going to show you. Put the two together and you got something pretty special. Okay, I want to give you a quick overview of what is in the bucket irrigation kits I sell at bucketirrigation.com. First, we have an instruction sheet. It tells how the bucket irrigation kit is assembled and how to use it. There is a loop stake like this. The loop stake is for holding the hose where you want it. In the ground you'll see this coming up. I make these loop stakes myself in my shop. Then we have the hose barb. It's a brass hose barb. It's a brass washer, a brass nut, and a neoprene washer to seal. This is made to last a lifetime. Then we have the length of hose and the trickle valve that I developed right here. You'll see how that works coming up. So that's the contents of the bucket irrigation kit from bucketirrigation.com. To install the hose barb in your bucket, you need to first of all measure up an inch and a quarter, make a mark. Next, you need a spade bit that has these uh, outside cutters. Some spade bits have a flat here. That will not work as well. You want something that's got the outside cutters, like you see here, then you would uh, just drill your hole. Get a little better, a little better over here. See, those outside cutters keep you on track. And, uh, oh, there we go. As easy as that. Half inch bit. There we go. A nice shot of the two together. Okay, now we take our bucket, the fitting for our bucket, and take the nut off. You leave the washer on the neoprene washer and the brass washer with it. And you put it in that hole that you just drilled. And uh, let me see here, you twist her in. You probably need a wrench, which I have here. And twist her in. Twist her in as far as you can. So it's snug there. And then inside the bucket, we go down with the washer, or not the washer, the nut, and you put that on, like so, and you can then take a pair of pliers, like this, like this, see, and hold the nut inside while you snug it up a little bit here. Okay, that's it. Finally, you take your length of hose with a trickle valve on it and you put it on the hose barb like so. Okay, and here we have our bucket irrigation kit. Now let me show you how the trickle valve works. Okay, here's a close-up showing the drip action at the end of the tube. I'm watering a strawberry plant here, and you can see the loop stake right here. You can see the hose is in the loop stake, and I have it set for a fast drip. I can throttle it down very easily by just turning that, drip, 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 or I can 
open it up and get a, a steady little flow which is probably what I want here because this soil is pretty porous and dry so there you go that's it's as simple as that Okay, here I am in my garden on a beautiful summer morning and I want to show you how I'm using these irrigation buckets to water individual uh, planting spaces in a row of strawberries. The, there's two buckets there. They're elevated on a small stand I bought at a garage sale. Fits in the walkway very nicely and elevates those buckets. And I'm working my way down the row, watering each hill where strawberries are planted. They haven't been watered at all this year. It's been very hot and dry. And so I'm giving them a deep watering, a full bucket for each of these planting spaces. These planting holes in the black plastic are 10 inches in diameter. They're 18 inches apart. I planted one strawberry in the spring, strawberry plant. And the concept is that I'll allow one runner to root. Like, uh, like you see there. So I'll have two strawberries in each circle. And I have circles, you can see a couple of them down there, where the strawberries that I planted in the spring died. So I need to get runners into them, or if I don't have a long enough runner coming off of a mother plant, I need to root some, and that's what I'm doing right here. You can see that runner comes off. I've cut a slice in the black plastic and I've used a pin, these little homemade pins, to pin that runner into the plastic. So it'll root there. And once it's established itself, I'll cut the plastic a little bit bigger, pull the plant out. Well, I, no, I won't pull it. I'll carefully excavate it out with a good bit of earth on it. And I'll move it down into those spots that are fallow so that I have a nice row of strawberries plants that'll bear fruit next spring two strawberry plants to each hole but that's not what this is really about it's about these irrigation buckets you can see i have two of them there and i'm watering irrigating one hill two strawberry plants with each bucket a full bucket of water into each of these holes. My soil is sandy, silty. It'll take the water, no problem. I've just started watering, so the whole area is not soaked, but by the time that bucket is empty, you can see it dripping there. By the time that bucket is empty, that whole area will be soaked and it'll be soaked deep. And that's what you wanna do when you water plants. You wanna water them deep. Don't water frequently, water infrequently, but water very deeply. That's what we're doing with these irrigation buckets, just working my way down the row, one spot at a time, as the bucket. Okay, here I wanna show you the bucket irrigation system being used to water a zucchini plant. And, I'm getting my first zucchini down here. You can see it right there, little baby zucchini. And in the background, you can see the hose delivering the water and the water to the that plant. Now this healthy zucchini plant and the zephyr summer squash plants you see there, also very healthy healthy and happy, were all started in whiz-bang tire sidewall cloches just like you see here. These cloches are discussed in my book, The Planet Whiz-bang Idea Book for Gardeners. Not real fancy, but boy do they work great. As you can see here, this fabric just tucks under the tire sidewall. A couple wires elevate the fabric above your plant and uh, in this particular cloche we have some cucumbers started 
they're in a protected environment. The bugs can't get to them. The wind doesn't bother them. It's uh, uh, just an ideal place to start cucumbers and squashes and other plants. Okay, so there's the the cloche. Like I said, it doesn't look like much, but it really does make a difference when it comes to getting your plants like this. Like this zephyr squash off to a great start. And here we have a bush cucumber. These plants planted like this lend themselves to bucket irrigation. Oh, there's some really nice blossoms. Right there. Now these are very healthy plants and they're healthy because even in the midst of drought, there's a ladybug under there. Even in the midst of drought, ah, there's a friend. They're healthy because even in the midst of drought, as I was saying, these plants have received plenty of water with periodic deep irrigation using the bucket, bucket irrigation. Here you can see that I am deep watering my cherry tomatoes on a string trellis, two at a time, two at this time. I got one more tomato to do. Let's take a look at these tomatoes first. See, this is a Whizbang T Post trellis span, which I've shown in other videos. And I've got three trunks going up the one, two, three over there. They're going to go up the strings, I'm going to be trained up the strings. I'll twirl them around and get that one started, I guess. Yeah. And down here, you can see. The water going in to the ground from the irrigation bucket. I'll put a full bucket of water into each plant, into the soil at the base of each plant. This one's positioned a little ways away. It's no big deal. It's not like you have to have it right on the stem. And this one here is yet to be watered. And you can see the buckets right there. One looks a little tippy, but buckets on top of buckets works just fine. That gives you enough elevation to uh, make this work. All righty. Okay, here I want to introduce you to a concept for gardening built around the irrigation buckets. Um, what I have here are my garden beds. This one that's bare is very dry and it was in peas until like a week ago, as was this one next to it with all the tires and wire and all that you see. I cracked the soil with my um, fork here. Instead of a broad fork, I have a regular fork. You just go through and kind of uh, use it like a broad fork to crack the soil, aerate it, and uh, then I raked it a little but bit. I didn't till the soil, I didn't turn it over. and. Then I laid down my one mil black plastic. I put the tires down the row. It's a 15 foot row. I think I have eight tires there. And uh, cut the holes in the center. And where I have the holes, I watered with a watering can. And I'll plant. I'm going to plant winter density lettuce. More winter density lettuce. It's going to put some chard in that one. Going to put chard in that one. It's July. I'm planting for fall. Another kind of kale another kind of kale, and then down here I'm going to have Caraflex cabbage. That's the pointy cabbages. I'll put four cabbages in there. I'll probably put four, four plants in each one of these. I'll plant more seeds than that, of course, but I'll thin them to four plants. Now, these, what you're looking at, are the uh, Whizbang tire sidewall cloches that, by the way, are in my book, The Planet Whizbang Idea Book for Garden. And when I want to water them, I'll just bring my buckets down my irrigation buckets, and I'll water each of these spaces separately. So that's 
That's an idea for gardening built around the irrigation buckets.